All right, so you guys are in the middle of doing some Australian headline shows along with supporting Stereophonics. How's the tour been? Uh, the Australian tour? Yeah. Uh, the Australian tour has been um, it's been good. It's, it's interesting for us that, that we've done so much touring in the States and coming back here, it feels like it's a whole, like it's a brand new market even though we're from Australia. Um, so um, it's been, it's been really, um, it's been a, a good but interesting in that you know, we got we went like a, our last tour. We did a headline tour in the states, and um, it, but the venues were like you know fifteen hundred or thousand or whatever. And then come back here, we just do like little tiny little clubs. So it's kind of it feels exotic for us coming back to our own country, you know, which is weird. Uh, so your debut record has been uh, responded to greatly. Um, have you been surprised at all by it? Um, I think that you're always just grateful if people react, react with the music. Um, so it's, I think with whenever you create something, you've always got apprehension um, when you put it out there. Um, not that you necessarily, you don't, as a musician, you don't need everybody to approve of what you do. But it's been, it's been good that it's people, you know. We also haven't been actively out there looking for uh, yeah. reviews or anything, or, or, you know, it's just, we did the record and, you know, that's, where we were at the time, and you know, people are liking it, it's great. Uh, so you've been able to build a very solid fan base in just two years. Um, what is it about the band that people have responded to? That's, I think it's been very difficult for us to answer. Um, you know, we, we don't hear the music the way anyone else hears it because we're so involved in it. So I mean, that what exactly it is that people. Um, uh, Connecting with if they do like the band, it's, it's hard for us to say. Um, I'll just leave that up to the critics and how the people. Uh, so, as you said, you've already had the chance to tour overseas. Um, did you ever think that opportunity will come so quickly? No, I think that um, you, you always hope that someday you get to you know play shows in America. But the fact that we've done, like we've toured there for the last year pretty much straight. Uh, I, don't, I didn't think that that would happen, mm. especially you know after. It, making it out of Australia is such a hard thing, you know, there's so many bands that I liked growing up that were big in Australia that just couldn't even crack it, we couldn't even get, you know, really play shows in the States, so the fact that our first shows were there it was really surprising. you also got to sometimes try and step back and just appreciate the, um, the moment you're in, you're, mm -hmm. just, you're so busy touring you don't realise, oh wow, I'm in Austin, Texas playing, you know, 800 people at our own headline show, you, you know, so you just, you just yeah. Try not to take for granted because you, you often can. Sometimes you find yourself, you know, not, not you know, not stepping out and just taking a moment to enjoy where you are. Smell the roses. Smell the roses. So, how are fans overseas been responding to the music? Um, I mean, American crowds have been incredible for us because I mean, they're really vocal um, compared to Australian crowds. Australian crowds are kind of stand there and kind of take it in, whereas Americans are just like they'll let you know if if they like it, and so. Uh, it, they're deafening. Like you, you come on, and it's like it's this really loud reception. So a lot of fun to play to. So you're going back there after you finish this tour mm -hmm. for a headline tour. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you guys are really establishing yourselves as an international uh, touring band? Um, I think so far we're establishing ourselves as an American band. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, we've done a little bit of touring in. Europe and England. Um, hopefully, we'll do a bit more of that later in the year. Mm. But it, it really feels like, I mean, we've done you know, ninety five percent of our touring in, in the states. So it um, feels like we still have to work hard to try and crack our home country. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So you've been doing a lot of TV performances in the states. Is that like uh, intimidating at all? Um, first one, like it, it gets kind of, it's it's always high pressure because it's one song, and you're playing to like how many million people. Um, so, but I mean, the first one is kind of, you know, it's quite nerve wracking, and then after a while, the last one we did was Letterman, uh, and I think that I felt the most relaxed on that one because we've done four at that point. So, but I think there's just always going to be, there, you're always going to feel nervous when you're doing that kind of show. Especially you know, shows like um, Jimmy Fallon when they've got the roots sitting right in front of you, yeah. watching you do your stuff. It's just, that's quite intimidating as a drummer having quest love the stir. Seeing right, right alongside you. Yeah, that's it. But it's, yeah. 
so there have been a handful of like remixes of your songs popping up. Um, what's that all been like, just seeing all that happen? It's good. I like um, when it's a good remix. It's, it's, it's cool hearing how people interpret the stuff because they can take as much or as little as they want from the original. You know, I can just use a vocal, I can use everything. So it's good. And when people get it right, it's, it's, you can hear a really good interpretation of the song. And you know, sometimes it's kind of it's not quite my cup of tea. Other times I, I love it. Um, what about you? Yeah, no, if they if they get it right, it's great. If they don't, it can be. Yeah. And, it's, and the thing is, there's no harm done. Like okay. uh, for us, it's we don't have to do anything. So here's the files. You know, go crazy. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes it's just it's incredible what people do. Uh, did you ever see the potential for your songs to be like remix and stuff like that when you wrote them? Uh, yeah, because. There's, you know, it's been happening for a good few years now where some of my favourite bands, they release their album and they put their tracks up online so that people could remix it and and there's been some, you know, really great remixes of stuff that I like. So it was always like something that we wanted to have done. So I read that you guys are looking to work on the second record. Um, where is that all at at the moment? Um, there's some like tinkering. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple of songs that didn't get finished for the first album that I think that we'll revisit and I'd like to put it in the new one. Um, there's a few new ideas that we've been working on in downtime, uh, like the odd day that we get off when we're touring. So it's kind of, you know, it's early stages. Uh, you know, hopefully early January, Feb next year, we'll get some time in the studio to, to really start getting stuck into it. But I think the plan, I'd really like to write and then, you know, work on songs for maybe a month or two and then tour for a bit and then kind of alternate because I think that's a good way of keeping yourself fresh because you can just too much time in the studio I think you can kind of lose touch with uh, with reality um, so when you go into that sort of process do you have any goals that you know, like maybe you didn't achieve with the, this, the first record I don't well yeah that there's always stuff that you want to do and, and you never want to re or I, I personally never want to go and revisit and once you've done something, you kind of there's a tendency just to want to do something new, and so there's definitely things that we want to try and do with the next album that we didn't do in the first one. But also, but you don't consciously kind of sit down. Okay, well, we didn't do this on the last album. Let's try and achieve that. It's really just kind of a group of ideas that float around your head, and and you sort of channel that when you're writing. And I don't think, it, you don't want to get too calculated when you're doing it. I don't think you just want to let it flow because in the end, that's what that's when things feel honest and connect with people and that's just this kind of this flow of creativity I think and so that's that's the aim is to try and tap into that stream of creativity that sometimes you can sometimes you can't uh, so it's been a massive 12 months for the band um, how do you guys continue to grow and build as a band from this point um, I think as long as you're not happy with where you're at you'll always keep growing you know there's always stuff that you, you want to kind of improve and, and, and in all areas of, of the band. Um, so I think that I'm guilty, if that's the right word, or like, not guilty, but like, I think that we're definitely a band that always wants to kind of keep improving and, and with, with, the, with the songwriting, and etc. So, um, and, and the good thing about touring and doing what we've been doing for the last year is you take on so many influences that they can't help, help but kind of affect what you're doing. And, um, which I think is a good thing. The more influences you can get, the more, the, the more different things you can draw from, I think that um, it just makes for a richer um, art. Well, thanks for speaking to me, Steve.